Hello everyone, this is Evan Abrams, and in this After Effects tutorial, we're gonna create some cartoony gleaming surfaces. This is a cartoony, maybe anime inspired look that we often see washing over sunglasses or windows, but we can use this technique for all kinds of unreal gleaming glowing situations. If you run into any troubles with this tutorial, please let me know in the comments and I'll try to get you through. And if this is the kind of thing that you like to learn, then subscribe to this channel, turn on notifications, and you won't miss a single one. So let's make some cool cartoon gleams like you might see in uh, maybe like a deal with it meme. <laughs> deal with it. So let's deal with these techniques in Adobe After Effects. I get memes. I'm on the internet. All right, so we're in After Effects and I've already got some shapes down on the timeline. We've got these lens shapes here. These are shape layers and we've got these frames. So just isolating them one at a time, just so you can see what we're working with. This is a little grouping of shape layers. We've got path of the outside here and then we're subtracting the inside here using merge paths. So just to get it all organized, we want the frames, we want the holes in the frames. I've done this so that I can use layer styles here to use a little bevel and emboss in order to get kind of a double highlight situation on here using white for both the shadow get a little dimensionality to these glasses just a stylistic choice but the main thing that we want to work with are these lenses here and these lenses are of course the cutouts the remaining shapes that you can just copy and paste onto other shape layers, or you can do like I've done and create all of this in Illustrator and then bring those shapes in here. The main thing though, is for this technique to work, you want to end up with shape layers. So whatever the lenses, the pane of glass, the shiny car, whatever we're gonna put the gleam on, whatever is going to be gleaming, we want that to be a shape layer, very specifically for some of the effects that we're gonna use later. Now I've styled up these lenses here with a bevel and emboss and I've jacked up the size quite a bit in order to create this kind of a kind of a highlight and shadow situation on here. But again, all of this is very subjective. Now, since I wanna make some light sweeps, there is a technique you can use using the CC light sweep. This should be part of your After Effects already. You can go ahead and drop this down onto a layer and you can, you can move around the center point. You can change the direction. You can make this sharp, linear, smooth, all kinds of things. However, this doesn't quite have the amount of control that I would like for these to have. If we want to do a very cartoony, very art directed, very stylized uh, light sweep, this is not going to get us there. And we'd have to get around this silly little bevel at the edge. Sometimes CC light sweep is what you want. In this case, for a cartoony look, I need way more control. I need to be able to design these light sweeps myself. So in order to do that, I'm gonna create a new composition and we are gonna be working with a 1920 by 1080. You might need something that is longer, larger. It really depends on the area that you're gonna be covering with the light sweep. So in this case, 1920 by 1080 is gonna work, but yours might need to be larger or wider, or you might need this to change in some way, but I'll just call this the sweep example and fire it up. Now, all we're gonna do is put in some white shapes in here, some white rectangles. And while it looks like we have a black background, that's actually transparent. I can toggle that on and off. So the only things we're putting in here are some white rectangles. I'm gonna do that by double clicking the rectangle tool up here and go in here and make sure that the color is totally white. And I'm just gonna dial this rectangle in here, unlinking the width and I don't know, something, something like this. This might be an average kind of a light band. And we're gonna deal with the position and scale. So I'm hitting P, then holding Shift and hitting S to bring up these two properties. And these are what we're going to keyframe for this to sweep across. So imagine if this where the lens or the window or whatever, and this is going to sweep across. So it's gonna start over here, and then maybe 30 frames later, it's gonna be all the way over here. And we have to decide, maybe this will be growing as it goes across, we could be doing that. So we'll just drag out the size here. Maybe it'll be 200 around there. We don't need to be super precise with this kind of thing. And then finally, we'll just ease that sweep. So that's kind of sweeping across. As it goes, 
I'm holding down alt and hitting the square bracket to trim off the layer at the playhead here. Maybe we want a few more of these. Let's duplicate this and just bump that by 10 frames and think about maybe this one should start larger over here and we don't need that accidental positional keyframe, but maybe this one, you know, starts larger and gets larger as it goes across. So now we've got one, two, and then how about we follow this up with a nice thin one. So again, we'll just duplicate this, shift it in time, and let's just make this one thinner like so, and then much, much thinner. This will get thinned almost right out. And this will be our light sweep situation. Ooh, sweep, sweep, sweep. This is where you really want to be dialing in the look and the feel, you know, how quickly and how many of these light sweeps. If you're trying to make this look like police lights or you're trying to make this look like a specific thing or maybe text going across, however you want to art direct this, that's up to you. But what I would recommend doing is dropping on here a new adjustment layer and making this a little bit messy. Since this is a cartoony look, we can... We can play around with unreal, unnatural ways that this light might look just for a stylistic effect. So I'm going to put on here a turbulent displace. So putting that on the adjustment layer makes everything below it turbulently displaced. And it's kind of like we're looking through some warpy glass. And we're going to bring up the size quite a bit. And we're going to bring down the amount just so it's, it's inducing a little bit of waviness in here. I think that's kind of fun. We could animate this. We could animate the evolution to be doing some stuff. We could be animating the offset if you want to animate with this. But I kind of want to throw in some regular type waves. So I'm going to grab the wave warp distort in here. And I'm just going to change the direction to be kind of up and down vertical like this, maybe a little bit off axis. And we're going to increase that wave width quite a lot and increase the wave height a little bit here, maybe to 20, something like that. Ooh, maybe even larger than that. Something like this. So it looks, looks just a little bit cool going across wave, wave, wave. And then I want to be pinning the turbulent displace and I'm going to be pinning all the edges of the wave warp. And this makes the edges a lot more uniform and normal. And the inside, the middle of this comp will be wavier. So things are more regular at the edge, wavier in the middle. So that's what we're going to use for our, our light sweep. Yours might be different. Again, this is where you really want to design specifically what you want to see. Maybe you need wavier things. Maybe you need these to be uh, faster, larger, uh, less defined, more defined. I don't know. I don't know your business, but it's your world. It can be whatever you'd like. Back here in this example, we need to composite these two things together. So we're going to take that sweep example. We're going to bring it out here onto the timeline and I'm going to resize it. I think what I want to do is have both lenses uh, showing the same uh, sweep across them. So I'm going to start with this first side over here. I'm going to line these up a little bit and we're going to use an effect that will constrain. So we'll only see the light sweep inside this lens area. So to accomplish that, I am going to use something called the set mat. So the set mat is going to be taking alpha information from one layer and mapping it onto another. So take the matte information from lens one and oops, <laughs> oopsie doodle. Looks like that hasn't worked. Why? What's going on? Well, we need to, in order for this to work the way we want, turn on this collapse transformation button. Now everything's going to work perfectly. I can move this layer around outside of what's going on and everything kind of works the way I would expect it to. So wave, wave, wave. Ooh, so wavy, so cool. Now I might need to, you know, scale this up a little and position it a little bit better, but this is what we end up with. Now we could of course duplicate the lens, put it above the sweep like this, and then we could use the track mat as well. That's a totally, totally valid way to make this happen. Or you could perhaps duplicate the shape and use it as a mask on this layer. I much prefer using the set mat effect I'm fairly lazy. I don't want so many layers to control. So dealing with the set mat is really going to do it for me because I can now have these two things be independent of each other if I wish. So if I want to move this around, I can. If I want to move this lens around, I can. 
and one is just acting like a window onto the other. Something else I want to do to really sell this effect is I want to add a bulge in here, bulge. So adding the distort bulge onto here, I'm going to set it above the set mat because I want this to happen first and then for the set mat to happen. And I'm just going to make this roughly the same size as the lens because glasses lenses, even though we're dealing with kind of a cartoony situation here, should be kind of convex or concave, whatever. It's up to you. It can be your glasses. You can, you can make whatever choices you want in your world. But this bulge kind of helps to sell the 3D-ness, the depth of this. And then finally, I think on top of this, I'm going to add a glow because we're using bevels and all sorts of things with, with the frames. I think a little bit of glow could go a long way. So let me just find the basic glow that you might be used, used to. So we can just grab that glow and snap it out here. There are many, many glows to choose from in the world. I'm going to increase the radius on that just so that it is kind of glowing the frames a little bit as it goes through, like the light is casting off of the lens and impacting the frame just a wee bit. It's wonderful. And I'm going to change that blending mode to add and then maybe bring the opacity down a little bit like so. So that's kind of doing it for me. I'm loving that. We can see that sweeping across. If we want to apply this to the second lens, all we need to do is duplicate this layer, shift it on over, and most importantly, change the set mat to now be referencing the second lens. Make sure that bulge is moved over into the correct spot because the bulge is a frame relative effect. So the bulge center needs to be moved on over. And now we can enjoy this wavy, cool flashing distortion as it rolls on by. One thing I'm going to say is that these light streaks are taking their opacity using the set mat from these lenses. So if you bring the transparency of those down, you'll notice that it's also bringing down the transparency of those gleams, which can be helpful because if the lenses were totally see-through, then we wouldn't be having these kinds of gleams happen at all. The light would pass perfectly right through. So linking those two together can be fairly helpful. We haven't had to use any expressions. Everything's very effects driven. And hopefully you're now gleaming things up. I will say that we can use this not only on shape layers. We can use this on text, for example. We can use this exact same methodology. You just grab yourself a text layer and use that to point the set mat at. You get the exact same results. The big thing is that you want to make sure you're dealing with shape layers or text layers things that have this collapse transformation situation going on so that they will so that they will respond as we expect them to the set mat can be a finicky friend so just pay close attention to whether you've got this turned on or off so go forth and gleam it up and just remember all you have to do is swap out what that set mat is referencing and you can be applying this to literally anything so thank you so much for spending some time with me here on the EC Abrams tutorial channel. If you go ahead and make something cool with this technique, and I know you will, please tweet it at me. I'm at EC Abrams on Twitter or tag me on Instagram. I love to see what people make with what we put out on the channel. If you've had any trouble with the concepts or techniques I've been talking about in this video, please let me know in the comments and I'll try to get you through. I try to answer all the comments when I'm able. And if learning this kind of thing is fun and good for you, then please subscribe to this channel. We talk about motion design, visual effects, all things After Effects here on the EC Abrams channel. So make sure you subscribe, turn on notifications so you don't miss a single one. I try to get a new tutorial out every week. And so far in 2020, I've only missed one week due to terrible illness. So I'm all better now. We're back on track and we're getting back into it. And coming up really soon in March, we're going to be getting back to live shows on this channel. So definitely subscribe so you don't miss out on those. Thanks again for watching and have a great day.